All right, so here's lesson two in this little series on music theory. Um, in lesson one, we talked about uh, three note chords, called them the, the basic triads. And uh, in this lesson, we're going to get into four note chords. Now, you might be thinking, okay, three notes wasn't that bad. Um, you sort of figure out your root note, you find the others using those intervals and whatever. And that all sort of worked, but four notes seems like a lot. But really, if you understand those basic triads, and you know how to find those, then these four note chords should be pretty simple. Because they're just going to be built right on top of those three note chords. You're just going to take one of those basic chords, and you're going to add an extra note to that. So all you really have to know is how to find that fourth note, and that's pretty much it. So this should actually turn out to be a little bit simpler than that first lesson, I think. So we'll go ahead and get into those. Now if you missed the first video, I'll put a link in the description so you can see it. Um, I would recommend watching that first just because this is going to pick up right where that left off. So we'll go ahead and get into these four note chords. Now these, these four note chords, they are called seventh chords. And when you see them written down, they usually look, look like this. You might have something like that, or maybe something like that. And then there's actually quite a few of these. We're just going to cover, I think, three of them today. Now, the reason they are called seventh chords, and the reason they have this seven on the end here, is because of that fourth note. Now, if you remember back to those three note chords, when you're trying to find one of those, you would you know, start on a root note. That was your first note. And then for your second note, you'd go up a third. Now, it could have been a major third, which would have been two whole steps. It could have been a minor third, just depended on the chord. But it'd be some kind of third. And then to get to that third note, you go over a fifth. You know, so from there to there. It might have been a perfect fifth or a diminished fifth. Also depends on the chord. But regardless, you'd be going over some kind of fifth. Now, to do these seventh chords, you're going to add a fourth note. And you're going to go over a seventh, which is why they call it a seventh chord. So all you really have to know here is just how these sevenths work. So that's what we'll get into, and then we'll sort of use that to put all this together. Now, there are two kinds of sevenths. There is what's called a major seventh, and there's what's called a minor seventh. Now, right here, I'm talking about intervals. When I say major seventh, what I mean is this particular interval, that distance between two notes. Minor seventh, same thing, that's an interval. Don't get this confused with chord names. There is a chord named a major seventh chord, like in the case of A major seven. That's referring to an entire chord. Um, this means you're going to play that, those four notes. Right over here, I'm just talking about this single interval of a seventh. So don't let this get mixed up with the actual chord names. They're sort of a different thing, even though they look kind of the same. But anyway, we're going to talk about this first, the, these two. Now to start with, we're going to do this major seventh. Now, the major seventh interval um, is going to be five whole steps and a half step. So if you start on a note, say D, and you count over five whole steps, you get one, two, three, four, five, and you have that last little half step, it puts you right there. And there's your major seventh. Um, now, that works, that's fine, but that's a lot of counting. To start here and go all the way over to here, there's a lot of counting in between. And remember, the whole idea with these chords was to be able to see them right away. You wanted to see a chord and almost instantly know how to play it. So counting is not a very good way to get there. So there's actually a much, much better way to see these, these major sevenths. Um, and to do it, you actually need to know another interval. Now that interval you need to know is what's called an octave. You might have heard of that before. Octaves are very easy to find. Now technically, they are six whole steps. But you're really never going to think of it that way. When you find an octave, say we start on D again, you're going to go over and you're going to find another D. And those two notes are going to be one octave apart. You just, you can find that easily because they're the same note, they have the same name. So you just kind of look for that identical note over here somewhere. And it's usually about like a hand span apart, roughly. Um, and that's going to work anywhere. You could start on say F sharp, there's another F sharp, those are an octave apart, G, octave over and you find G. So if you just kind of spend a minute looking for those, you should get to where you can find those pretty quickly. They're pretty easy to see once you get used to that whole idea. All right, so we're going to use that octave to find this major seventh. Now an octave is those six whole steps, and a major seventh is just five and a half. So that means that if you go over an octave, and you just come back a half step, remember one of these was a half step, put you right there, and you have your major seventh. 
Now those you really can see right away. Any note you want to start on, you can find your octave, slide back, and you should be able to find that major seventh just about right away. So I always spend a minute just sort of looking for those major sevenths, just pick random notes to start on and, and make sure you can find those very quickly, just like that. But if you're used to seeing your octave and just doing that little half step thing, then that should be very easy. Now, this minor seventh, um, let's talk about that one. If you remember back to those triads, we had the, uh, the major third and the minor third. They're, sort of, they're both called third, but you have these two versions. There's the major and the minor. And the major third was two whole steps. The minor third was just a half step back, sort of like right there in step. Uh, and these are gonna follow the same rules. You have your major seventh, you know what that is now. To find the minor seventh, you just have to bring that back another half step. And that's actually how all these major minor pairs work. There's plenty of intervals that, that use this. You have third, second, sixth, um, ninth, that kind of stuff. It's all gonna follow these same rules. You have a major one, a minor one, and the minor one is just a half step lower than the major one. So if you're trying to find a major seventh, start on a note, um, you can go over an octave. You can find your major seventh by sliding back a half step. You can find your minor seventh by sliding back another half step. Now, probably a better way to find it is to sort of think of it this way. Start on a note, go over an octave, and then just move back a whole step. It's the same thing. You'll, you'll get a whole step by going back a half step for your major seventh, and then back another half step to get to your minor seventh, but it's less thinking. You'll be able to see those faster if you just kind of look for an octave and then move back a whole step. So same thing, just kind of play around with those, try to find those very quickly, see if you can see that. Um, but hopefully that, that should be pretty easy, especially if you're, if you're good at seeing those octaves. And that's these two, that's the major seventh and the minor seventh, and that's what we need. Now, technically, there is another type of seventh. There is what's called a diminished seventh. And a diminished seventh is a minor seventh that's lowered even farther. It's lowered an extra half step. But that diminished seventh interval, that only happens in one very particular case, and it's very, very rare. So for now, just kind of ignore that. Pretend that really this is all you're going to be dealing with. I'll show you how that diminished seven, how that diminished seventh works a little bit later, but for now, just figure these are your two sevenths, and you'll deal with that when you get to it. Um, so that should be everything we need to actually put these chords together. So let's start with this chord right here. Now, when you're actually going to figure out a seventh chord, remember you just need two things. You need to know what the basic triad is, and then you need to know what kind of seventh you're gonna put on top. Now, in the case of this chord, it's pretty easy to remember. This is called an A major seventh chord. And this is going to have a major triad, and it's going to have a major seventh. So we find our root note, that's A, Hopefully you can remember how to make just the A major chord. And then on top of that, we have to do the major seven. So start on our root note, go over an octave, slide it back a half step, and there's your major seventh right there. And that gives you that major seventh chord. It's pretty easy to remember. Just figure that, you know, like the name of that chord is saying everything is major. You know, the major triad, major seventh. So that should hopefully be easy enough to remember. So I would try a few of those. Just pick kind of random notes to start on. Say you start on D. Remember, just make a, a D major chord. Remember, there's a major third in here. There's a perfect fifth. So there's your D major. And then go up a major seventh. So starting on D, there's your octave. There's your major seventh. And there's your D major seventh chord. So just pick a few to, to try out. Um, start on some of those weird notes again. Like B, kind of annoying, but make sure you know how to do that. Sort of move around finding major seventh chords. Okay, once you have that, this will also be very easy. Um, the way this one works is you have a minor triad and you have a minor seventh, right there. So if you want to start on F sharp in this case, then here's your F sharp root note. Find that F sharp minor chord, just that basic triad, and then from the F, you're gonna do your minor seventh. So you start from here, here's your octave, move back a whole step, and there's your F minor seventh. Same deal. Try to find a few of those, get used to playing them. Um, and then I would just spend a little while kind of doing both. Pick a random note to start on and then either do a, mi a major seventh or a minor seventh, just kind of switch back and forth. But get used to those two. And there's actually only one other one that I want to show you right now. Um, and that is this chord. Now, this, there's nothing complicated about this chord, but it it can get a little bit confusing. A lot of people kind of mix this up with some of the other chords. So let me tell you what this is. This is what's called a dominant seventh chord. 
And you might think, okay, dominant, what is that coming from? So far, all these chord names have been based on some interval. You know, if you had a major chord, it was because it had that major interval. Major seventh has a major triad and a major seventh. But dominant, there is no dominant interval. Now, the, the reason it's called that has to do with how this chord gets used. When you start using this chord, like in the context of, of music and in a song, it has this very particular function. It kind of, it builds a lot of tension. It has this very, like, tense sound to it. And they, they say it kind of dominates the, the key or the chords. And that's something that will make sense a little later. We'll kind of get into that as we go. But for now, just figure it's a name. It has to do with what the chord does. And it's just a name you kind of have to remember. Um, now, a lot of times, this is just referred to as a seven chord, say C7, um, rather than actually saying C dominant seven. And it's always just written like this. You have your root note, and then just this seven. Um, so don't let this, this get mixed up with, like, say, a major chord. If you say C7, you're talking about a C dominant seventh chord, not a C major seventh. If you want to refer to a C major seventh chord, you have to say C major seventh. It's very important to kind of get those straightened out because a lot of people get this mixed up. So in the case of a C7 chord, what you're going to do here is you're going to play a major triad and then you're going to play a minor seventh. Now, this is a pretty vague name. It doesn't really give you much to go on as far as what to do. So you just have to kind of remember it, but it's not complicated. Just think of it as kind of a mix between these two. It has a major triad and a minor seventh. So if we start on C, right there, there's our C major chord. To do our minor seventh, start here, there's your octave, there's your minor seventh. Right? And there's that C dominant seventh chord. Same deal, start anywhere, um, say A, there's an A dominant seventh. And you can kind of hear that, that sort of tense sound to it that has to do with you know, why it's called a dominant chord. But like I said, we'll get into that more later. Um, and that's going to be basically it for now. That's how these first three seventh chords work. Um, in the next video, I'll cover the other seventh chords. There's actually seven of them total. There's these three and then four others. Um, but if you understand these three and how they're put together with that basic triad and then the, one of these seventh intervals here, um, there's not a whole lot to think about with the other one. Just kind of a few little goofy things that I'll go over, but there's not much else to it. So. Hopefully this makes sense to you, and um, in the next video I'll kind of cover that stuff. Um, same deal as before. If this helped you, then please let me know. Um, my motivation to make these videos um, is entirely dependent on how much people like them. I know that sounds shallow, but that is really just kind of how it works for me. So please let me know, um, and I hope this, this really worked for you, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.